Hello, Michael. I'm delighted to welcome you to the Princess Grace Irish Library and thank you for joining us live from Eileen Gray's E1027 in Rockbroom Cap Martin. Michael, you have been instrumental in getting the villa back on its feet again. And there's been a lot of uh, fundraising and hard work on your behalf and others. So tell us, thank you for joining us and telling us a little bit about this and why we should all be able to come now. Well, first of all, whatever I say, whatever I show you in the background or around the house, nothing is like actually seeing it for yourselves. Uh, because what you do in this house is get a real feel for the genius of Eileen Gray. Uh, and the interior and the exterior that she was trying to create and was able to create here in 1929. It's astonishingly modern. Uh, it's nearly 90 years old now, a little more than 90 years old. And, uh, and it just feels so up to date uh, even now. What we have done is to take, an, take all the elements that she put together. Uh, if you actually break the house down uh, into uh, apart from the exterior surfaces, uh, there are something like 350 identifiable pieces of furniture or uh, ways of dealing, ways of treating a problem like a screen. Um, and uh, what we have done is to recreate each of them as it was at that stage. Some of them are actually original and that we've just, all we've done is uh, made sure that they are in good condition uh, and have scraped off the layers of paint that have accumulated uh, over successive occupations as they do. Um, but what you really have is the feel of this house in 1929, and it was magical. Uh, every inch, every, every, every way you look, there are joys, there are pleasures, uh, there are ways of looking at things which, are total, to, which we've total, totally lost now. Um, uh, I'm in this wonderful room, I'm in front of uh, what will be a fireplace in winter uh, with this wonderful view of the Mediterranean and of Monaco. Uh, and, uh, and it's just a sort of magical elsewhere uh, that she has managed to create. That's excellent. And earlier you were outside and there was music, you're having a concert tonight. Uh, you opened on the 16th of June, as everybody knows, as Bloomsday, and you opened with the grand gala uh, with Prince Albert, who uh, was in attendance, and also the ambassador, Patricia O'Brien, to France and Monaco. So tell us a little bit about that. It's well, that, was, it was, that was a great event because it was a, our first opportunity to show to people who had helped us and supported us through quite a long period of time how the place would actually look finished. And, uh, and there was a lot of wonder about. But we also, we had a few other lovely things like, for example, uh, James Joyce was actually one of Eileen Gray's clients in Paris. And she designed a rug for, for him, um, which she called Ulysses, and which we have the pattern for, but there are no examples of that rug uh, existing anywhere in the world. So we recreated that rug in Tibet, it took seven months. Uh, it's quite a big runner. It's uh, two meters 40 by 80. Uh, and it has a very distinct pattern. And we were able to, uh, to auction this wonderful uh, piece of, of, of carpeting uh, that night uh, on Bloomsday uh, and, uh, and Ulysses. And that was, that was just a lovely piece of luck and of timing. Absolutely. So all of those funds and also all of the fees, admissions that visitors um, give will go towards the continued upkeep and maintenance. Yes. Yes. The, re the restoration itself is quite, I mean, it's, it's, it's taken seven years and it's cost uh, just around five and a half million euros. Uh, the state yeah. in France is very generous because uh, uh, they've, we've had grants from the Ministry of Culture, from the region, from the department, uh, that have counted for about half of that. So what we've had to do over the last seven years uh, and culminating on June 16th is raise uh, something like two and a half million euros 
in order to cover the non-granted part of, the, uh, of, of that. And uh, uh, so everything that we have raised has gone towards that, and we're very nearly there. We still have a little fundraising to do, and uh, one or two fundraising events uh, to do, including one wonderful one on the 27th of September in Chateau Lacoste. But anyway, that is something that uh, uh, if anyone's <laughs> interested in being present, they can let me know. In the meantime, 16th, 16th of September, come and see uh, what has been done with the money we've raised and with the grants we've received so far and, uh, and sit on and touch the amazing pieces of furniture that Eileen Gray designed and just live the atmosphere of living in this place which is, I mean, she was looking for somewhere remote and in 1926, or 1929 when she finished, but in 1926 when she started, this seemed like as remote a part of the world as you could get. Uh, I think if we were, if she'd been a Swede, she'd have said she'd found an island all to her own. But <laughs> as we all know, if you look towards uh, Eileen Gray's villa, uh, look towards uh, the Cap Martin, uh, you will see that uh, this is no longer the only building around. Absolutely, and we are going to be very happy to join you there on the 16th of September. So we look forward to that. We'll have uh, friends of the library coming. And um, thank you again, Michael, for this. Well done. Pleasure. Great, uh, pleasure to talk to you. And uh, I'm sure you'll have lots of people thanking you for all of the hard work when we well, see it, you in person. It, thanking is not the, the thing. The thing is living it, experiencing it, and seeing the, the pleasure that it actually gives. That really is its reward. So that'd be very welcome and uh, look forward to meeting you then. Bye. Great. And have a lovely concert tonight, Michael. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.